All right. Coming up uh, is the Australian International Documentary Conference, something that I'm uh, very pleased about. It's uh, such imp so important to focus on documentary. And uh, it's my great pleasure to be speaking to the CEO and Creative Director of the AIDC, Natasha Gadd. Natasha, welcome to Movie Metropolis. Thanks for having me, Peter. It's great to be here. Great to talk to you. Now, for, for uh, I know I've spoken about the AIDC over a number of years. I remember when it was on in Adelaide and I attended uh, a number of events there. It's it's always a, a fantastic focus on a documentary. But just uh, remind people, because it's on from the 5th to the 8th of March at ACME, what is AIDC all about? Well, we've been running for over... 35 years and we're a primarily industry facing event that is designed to support and elevate documentary and factual storytelling and craft and we do that through a range of sessions and master classes uh, with incredible uh, practitioners from all across the globe as well as screenings and industry marketplaces so we have this brilliant suite of uh, initiatives that we design with some of our industry partners and we also have a big international pitching forum and so that's an opportunity for filmmakers with projects at any stage in development to receive pitching and um, pitching training mentoring and then the opportunity to effectively pitch their pro their project in development to a room full of buyers representing broadcasters and streamers and distributors and sales agents. And the idea is that we try and get all the right people in the room to help uh, greenlight a bunch of new projects. Okay, which is great. So the outcome, really, you, you're hoping is that more documentaries are produced, that people have the ability to uh, work out how to make their documentaries. And also, I suppose, for uh, other people who attend the conference to understand the importance and value of documentary. That's right. We sort of class um, our, our delegate base as um, obviously practitioners who are really wanting to get their, their films made um, and also hear from other practitioners about recent projects that they might have finished. So whether it's sort of feature theatrical docs or series for um, platforms and also to, um, I guess, the, the the beautiful thing about watching other some of these <laughs> excuse me pitching forums is you kind of learn from watching other people pitch and you also get industry intel from the decision makers who are responding <coughs> excuse me so uh yeah we also have our decision makers as I said our buyers and our commissioners sales agents distributors and then we have people who we call knowledge seekers who are just interested in learning about the art and craft and business of documentary storytelling. Which is a terrific uh, event and process. <coughs> <laughs> yes, that's okay. And I know how well attended uh, the conference is uh, every year. And uh, it's it's great that it's on at ACME, uh, as I mentioned, from the 5th to the 8th of March. And I notice uh, afterwards there's an online uh, international marketplace that will take place. That's right. Well, I guess in responding to um, the sort of travel restrictions that happened over the last couple of years with COVID, um, we have adapted as have many other industry events. So we have um, ensured that we have now an online component, which is for any practitioners and decision makers who can't actually attend AIDC in person. And we don't want people taking me in like online meetings while they're on the ground at Acme in Melbourne. We want people meeting and networking and doing business and not trying to find a quiet space on their laptop. So the idea of it taking the, the sort of online marketplace um, uh, to the, the sort of days after AIDC also means that we get like a much bigger contingent of buyers. You know, in the past, we would be really reliant on those who could effectively make it to Melbourne and afford to take, you know, that big time out of their schedule. And we still do that. But this way we do get, you know, a really big sweep and a much greater selection of buyers from all across the world. 
excellent stuff that uh, that makes it uh, <laughs> a, a really superb uh, <laughs> a really superb conference um and i'm always intrigued by th this issue of obviously australian documentaries being made it's important we tell our stories but also uh, emerging issues of docudrama uh, and of uh, using animation now to tell documentary stories, uh, which I've noticed in a, in a few films. So it's interesting how diverse documentary filmmaking has become. Oh, absolutely. And you think about, you know, the history of documentary storytelling and and it's been, a, it's been evolving since day one when you think about it. I mean, I guess sometimes the potentiality of the creative treatment of some of those documentaries was... Um, limited sometimes by the technology you know the early days where the film had to be attached to the tripod and obviously you're working with with film um and then you know in that era of direct cinema that emerged in the 70s or that came out of um the cinema verite movement where the cameras became portable and filmmakers like the Maisels brothers could effectively get access to places that they never had access to before which means that as a viewer we go on that journey. We get to go behind the scenes. You know, we get to become part of a primary uh, electoral race. We get to go on stage with Bob Dylan. And, you know, I think there's been like that sort of evolution over time. And, um, but what we're seeing now, I guess, with every, there just is such a greater democratization of, of media that people can film on their iPhones. They can edit on their own. They don't need the full production team in the same way um, and there aren't rigid guidelines that sort of are around documentary so you can have much more of the poetic documentary you can have you know lyrical hybrid animated uh, VR immersive interactive and something that we look at at AIDC we're not just limited to feature length or documentary series or factual formats that you sort of imagine being the staple we're, we're looking at um, the nexus of documentary and technology. So whether that's data journalism, whether that's VR, whether that's um, AI and how AI intersects, whether um, we're looking at audio documentaries, which is, you know, huge. Like we kind of distinguish that from podcasts, I guess, where you have people sort of talking um, about particular topics. We're really into the idea of exploring um storytelling through audio documentaries and that's a big focus at AIDC and this year what we're doing as well is we're really exploring that uh I guess the intersection of documentary and social media it's really interesting because it's not something that um I guess traditional documentary makers would think of in terms of short bite-sized uh TikTok or YouTube pieces or um, Instagram pieces, but it actually is where all the younger audiences are going. And um, the, the, the style is very different. It's um, not trying to be a documentary, like a 90-minute documentary, but they are wanting to convey factual content and explore issues around history, gender, sexual identity, the things that <clears throat> matter to young people on platforms that young people are going to so it's really important that rather than just sort of shutting the door to that and saying, oh, social media docs are not the sort of quality that we want in our industry, we go, well, what is happening in that space? And let's let's understand that and see what the potential is for it. What a terrific comprehensive uh, response. So that's, <laughs> that's great, uh, Natasha. Thanks for that. Now, uh, let's talk about uh, some of your special guests. And uh, it's great that you've got three Oscar-nominated uh, filmmakers, as uh, that I'm aware of so far, that are part of uh, the conference. Sierra Doza, whose uh, Fire of Love just won uh, the DGA Award. Uh, for Best Documentary Direction. Daniel Roja for Navalny, what a superb documentary, and that won the BAFTA uh, for Best Documentary just recently. Two days ago. Yes, yes. And uh, Shonok Sen, whose documentary All That Breathes about pollution in Delhi and the birds, saving the birds, etc. Incredible film. Um, it, it's great that you're able to invite and get some really great guests, filmmakers, to talk about their process. We've been following these films since, you know, we started thinking about the program mid last year and um, 
I have to say, we did have our finger on the Oscars pulse. We're pretty, we actually launched the program the night that the nominations came out. And um, yeah. <clears throat> as I said, like the the kind of caliber is just so high this year. And to have those filmmakers, a, a fire of love and all that breathes has been going head to head in the kind of awards um uh global awards over the past year it's just like just you know constantly re receiving recognition and rightly so these are both extraordinary films and um very different I mean I love archive documentaries and the thing that I really loved about Fire of Love was basically the way that Sarah and her team breathed new life into these you know um archives of Maurice and Katja Craft and the combination of you know, the whimsy that was already and the quirkiness that was already within the kind of archival footage because Maurice and Kutch uh, were, you know, obviously these kind of quirky French volcanologists who fell in love over, you know, the craters of bubbling lava, which is odd in itself. Yeah. But, um, you know, adding the kind of music and adding um, a narration and script with Miranda July, it just sort of takes it to a new level and, it, and adds these beautiful layers and it's a way that you can repurpose archives to tell a story afresh and I think that's that's really interesting and all that breathes is just so delicate such a beautifully observed quiet film which we don't see that much of these days you know there's that sort of tendency to be getting you know especially with with I guess the streamers and um doc series and you know there's there's sort of that tendency to want to pack a punch get people hooked um and you know binge watch this is just such a slow meditative observational film and for a second uh feature director I just think that shows remarkable confidence to to pull back and and create a film like that Absolutely, yeah. So that's terrific. So they'll they'll be uh, in Melbourne and will be part of the uh, the conference and will be part of discussions. I'm I'm really pleased to see your. your they will actually be zooming. They, they oh, will they're zooming. Be zooming in ah. because the Oscars are three days later, and so they were ah. all planning to be here, but obviously because they are like or two of, three days I think out from the Oscars. Of course, of course. <laughs> Just in case anyone was planning on getting an autograph. <laughs> How interesting. But, yes, of course, because the Oscars are on the 13th of March, our time. So uh, that, uh, of course, and the conference is uh, 5th to the 8th of uh, March. So totally understandable. Yeah. I'm so pleased that you're screening Laura Poitras's uh, wonderful documentary, All the Beauty and the Bloodshed, which I just saw recently. What a great film that is. And uh, hopefully everyone will go along and see it. This is really exciting. This is a Victorian premiere, obviously, at one um, at Venice. I love Laura's work. I love Nan Golden's work. I've always been a fan of her photography. And I just think that the, the way that Laura, um, you know, this is an investigative documentary that explores the involvement of the Sackler family um, in the kind of uh, uh, fentanyl producing um, uh, drugs that have had such a, you know, disastrous impact on um, Americans in the opioid crisis. And so the fact that Nan is on a mission who had, had experienced um, an addiction of, of this kind, um, that Nan is actually going to the uh, art galleries and exhibition spaces that her works have adorned the walls of to actually protest the fact that the Sacklers are, you know, backing a lot of those galleries and and museums and bringing that art world together with, I guess, activism and resistance. And it's really clever. It's great. It is a great documentary and it deals with other issues as well. I must say, I was very impressed uh, with that with that film. Now, apart from that, you've obviously got lots of Australian filmmaker uh, guests and New Z I noticed David Farrier from New Zealand. Loved his film Tickled and Mr. Organ. Uh, but uh, also uh, uh, you've got uh, Emma Sullivan. You've got um, um, so many other, uh, Lynette Walworth and so on, so many other producers, filmmakers, etc. which does mean that it, it, it's a great opportunity for people to learn and to pitch their films. Well, that's that's right. It's the opportunity to to hear from those people who have have gone through that process of developing a project, 
um, pitching a project, possibly seeing that project fall over, get back up, fall over, get back up, as we know the cycle, um, and uh, and then having the opportunity to see some of those films um, in the screening program. You really do get to see um, projects explored at every stage of development. So you're obviously hearing from the, the pitching teams who have a project um, and they're literally doing their kind of verbal pitch with a short trailer. Uh, you see works in progress. You get to um, hear from panellists drilling down into scenes that might be ungraded or unmixed. Um, so looking at the craft of underwater filming and how you do, like, how you um, film on the ocean and also how to work with sound on the ocean. You consider the kind of, like, complexities of that. We look at um, the art of archives, so breaking scenes down um, that are multi-layered archive works. We are looking at the anatomy of audio uh, documentary. So again, one scene at a time and talking about how you can layer to build auditory worlds to create um, story uh, and engagement when you're only dealing with, with sound. So, yeah, there's lots of... Um, there's a great opportunity to just learn from from all of the different practitioners across, uh, as I said, shorts, audio, features, series, factual formats, returnable formats. You know, we we cover it. We cover it all. You certainly do, <laughs> and it's also important to hear from the various commissioning producers, the uh, organisations, the streaming services, the the TV channels, etc. Who, uh, with the proliferation now of documentary and with uh, uh, outlets being possible, about getting films screened and uh, available to the public in some way, shape, or form. Um, and it's so great that people have the opportunity to find that out as well. That's that's the other part of this that, um, yeah, I'm glad you brought that up because we have obviously those sessions that are dedicated to craft. So you're hearing from filmmakers and practitioners, producers, but we have a lot of sessions that are industry focused. So, you know, hearing from um, a, a pool of streamers about what they are looking for and how to pitch to them and what they're commissioning and maybe some of the key trends. We're hearing from global public broadcasters and what they're doing you know obviously the streamers have been pretty disruptive um, to the public broadcast sector but what they're doing and how they're forming new alliances with each other to build budgets and you know greater resources for global stories uh, we get to hear from uh, people working in the theatrical uh, documentary sector and um, you know what a, a thriving documentary sector theatrical documentary sector could look like because we know that um, viewing in cinemas has taken a real hit after COVID and also with the more video on demand. So what is bringing people into the cinemas to watch theatrical docs and exploring, you know, that, that side of the equation as well? So much to uh, appreciate. And how can you schedule it all in in four days? That's amazing. <laughs> I don't know. It's been a very long year. Um, <laughs> the other thing that we uh, have made available this year is uh, catch up. So, you know, in in the past when we didn't have the sort of, I guess, zooming in of participants and um, online uh, recording of sessions, it would you, you'd come to AIDC, you'd have four days and at any given sort of time in the schedule, you'd have to choose between, you know, what you'd have to choose one session of three. Now you can do that, but you can go home and you can catch up on the others so you're not going to miss out on anything. Ah, excellent stuff. Now, if people go to the website, aidc.com.au, obviously they can get more information, uh, book uh, if they want to attend, etc. cetera. Um, any, any further uh, information or updates about that, the website and so on? <clears throat> Just that there are, uh, if, if you're an industry um, practitioner, you're obviously... Uh, probably looking to register you, you can we actually have day passes and we have you know the full all access suite of passes um but if you just want to come along to the screenings that's okay too you can just go to aidc.com.au and go to the screenings page and those screenings will all be happening at acme um and are available for general public as well without um having to register so we have every type on offer 
You certainly do. And uh, and so ACME will be buzzing from the 5th to the 8th of March for the uh, AIDC, the Australian International Documentary Conference. And uh, Natasha, before I let you go, I must ask you, leaving aside all the documentaries we've talked about and what's in the program and so on, do you have a particular favourite documentary or one you've seen recently that has impressed you? Uh, I... I love observational films. Like that is, you know, the, the the when I was a programmer at Acme and real on real life on film. Like I just really love observational films that where you're not being sort of talked at and you get to sort of go on that beautiful journey. And one that I saw recently was called House of Splinters, which I think is also another Oscar, one of the the Oscar nominees for this year. Um, uh, set in a U Ukrainian um, refuge for young children. Um, and, I mean, it's a hard watch um, and it's, it really has that sort of fly-on-the-wall feeling of of really being there and, and seeing kind of, I guess, life unfolding before the camera. Um, and, you know, it's a tricky one. It's that thing. It always that that film reminded me of Adette Bellsberg's *Children Underground*, which um, was set uh, was filmed in um, the streets of Bucharest in the in the underground train stations. And um, you know, these are, are kids who a lot of the refuges and 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 orphanages had been closed down under the Ceausescu um, regime, and so there was a lot of children on the streets um, and. She filmed with these children in the train stations when they were, you know, um, sniffing paint and doing drugs and, you know, they were kids who were around the ages of 10, 10 to 15. It's really hard to watch. And there was a, a lot of talk about the choices between um, intervening and, like, stopping that one child from doing that thing in that moment and there was some criticism about that. And, and she said, you know, it was a really difficult choice to make. It was, do I intervene and help this moment, this child in this moment in the short term, or do I film what is actually happening and take this story to the world and hopefully create change? And, you know, they're, they're the, the tough questions that filmmakers have to ask. And, you know, it is that our theme this year, Agents of Change, it's really celebrating the filmmakers who are going out there and telling and, and documenting those stories and taking those stories to the world that can hopefully have some real world change. You know, it's it can be very idealistic to think that that can happen, but we've seen documentaries that have overturned wrongful convictions. You think about Errol Morris's The Thin Blue Line. You think about even the Teacher's Pep audio doc recently, um, the uh, West Memphis Three Paradise Lost series, like, you know, it does happen and documentary makers can really be thanked for that. Absolutely endorse that. And uh, apart from the ethical issues you talk about and so on, uh, I agree film as an agent of change and documentaries can certainly uh, be agents of change. Natasha, it's been a pleasure talking to you. We've been speaking to Natasha Gadd, who's the CEO and Creative Director of the AIDC, Australian International Documentary Conference, March 5th to the 8th at ACME, visit aidc.com.au. Natasha, thank you so much for talking with me. My pleasure. Thanks for the great questions. <laughs> thank you. All the best. Bye-bye.